From hot spots and hidden gems to lots of local flavor, it's your guide to all things local the unscripted way. And tonight we're cooking with some of LA's top chefs. From the best taco trucks to the best Michelin star dining experiences, LA is a foodie city and we love every mouth-watering morsel of it. Hi everyone, I'm Dana Devon, high above the City of Angels. And you know what's on the menu tonight? Food, and lots of it, because we are going behind the steams with LA's super chefs. Our first course, Italian, and it's in Playa Vista, which I think I can see it way over there, along with our Olivia de Bortoli. And you said it's seasonal, right? Yeah, yeah, the squash blossoms are coming up. They actually grow right up the hill there. And there's some that grow wild. And you see the flowers up there all the time. It's wow. pretty cool, yeah. Superfine is a neighborhood restaurant that serves really fresh uh, food that's locally inspired, but also inspired by, by Italy and Italian cooking and Italian food sensibilities. My biggest influence in the kitchen was always my mom and my nonna. My mom was from Bologna, Italy, so I grew up going there every summer. And life there in Italy kind of revolves around the dining room table. So just food with family, and that really influenced me. And that type of cooking was how, why we eventually opened Rosso Blue, which was kind of an homage to Bologna and Los Angeles at the same time. We've been working together since we opened our first restaurant together, and that was so over like 13 years ago. I'd never worked in a restaurant before. Um, I have a finance background, and basically Steve had reached out to me, hey, you know, can you help me find investors for this restaurant, and I want my own restaurant. We started working together that way. Raising a, a family and, and running a restaurant are actually kind of similar. We uh, feel responsible for a lot. It's, there's a lot of pressure doing it, but working together actually takes some of that pressure off. So my favorite dish here is the chicken liver rigatoni. So when I was pregnant, Steve made this dish for me all the time. So this basically has a mushroom base, carrots, onions, celery, and then seared chicken liver that's cut, cleaned and cut up, and then deglazed with some Marsala wine. The liver itself like thickens as it cooks, so it coats the pasta really nicely. I wanted it every night, and um, so I'm so happy it's here on the menu, and now I get to share it with everybody that comes in, and I tell the story, too. And she actually ate a lot of filet of fish also. She's like, you know, <laughs> we, <laughs> we can't. Filet of fish and this pasta, yes. that was her pregnancy yes. diet. Mmm. tried to stay involved within our communities. Something as simple as picking our plants outside. It's a savory crepe batter. When I cook the crepes, I actually cook a squash blossom into them. Cheers. Cheers. Let's go. We wanted to stay native California plants. The wine program, we do family growers because we, we know that that comes from a sense of community. All our liquor brands that we use, those are all very small producer, family based. You know, it just gives you that overall vibe of community. Now from the west to the east, if you're heading downtown, make plans to visit the Disney Music Center. Not for the music, but the food. You'll get to taste the very fine cuisine of super chef Ray Garcia at his stunning restaurant, Astrid. There's so much that I love about cooking. You know, I think part of it is that that adrenaline rush, part of it is that you know immediate and instant gratification. You don't have to wait months or years to see the fruit of your labor. It's just in, in a matter of minutes, you feel that 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 pleasure that you, you did something you know great. You can't just look at you know the area around your cutting board. You have to look beyond and into the environment, and you know, that's why whatever we're, we're sourcing, we, we carefully choose our our partners and our ingredients. Astrid is a bit more of a, a reconnection into my uh, professional upbringing and, and growth. So it's, it's hyper seasonal, it's Californian, it's uniquely Angelino with influences from all around the country. Sustainability is a huge part of you know, my cooking philosophy, and not only just for our own health, but the health of the planet. 
Astrid has such an amazing backdrop, you know, being here in downtown um, at the heart of all these you know, amazing cultural institutions, the, the, the Music Center, Colbert, the Broad Museum. It, it's just a beautiful uh, backdrop for us. It just really is embracing the culture, ingredients, and culinary traditions of the city. Okay. Um, you know, and that's informed by, you know, all different parts of the world. Well, I started off as a, a busser handing out chips and salsa at a Mexican restaurant until I switched over into, into cooking. My first real cooking job, I would say, was at the Peninsula Hotel uh, in Beverly Hills. So from there, after spending seven years in the hotel, um, I had an opportunity to open my, my, my own restaurant within a, another hotel called Fig and that was at the, at the Fairmont. So I spent another seven years uh, doing that, and then I realized it was time for me to do something that was a bit more personally connected. And that's when I opened up uh, Broken Spanish, which was a contemporary Mexican or Mexican-American restaurant. Okay, Chef, what are we doing today? Okay, we're gonna start with a uh, burrata salad that we do here at Ash. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. That cheese is so creamy and delicious, but also, you get the crunch of the apples and like the bitterness of the endive and the croutons. And then you get the salt from the oil. Oh my God, it's so good. That's delicious. So we're gonna make our branzino dish. Okay. I like branzino because it's, it, it's delicate. Uh, it has a little bit of sweetness to it, but it can still stand up to some bigger flavors. Okay. Which we're gonna use today. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so flaky, but yet I actually like the skin. It's crispy. And, and it, then it's spicy. It's like that sauce on top of it because you get the crunch of the vegetables. Oh my God, it's so good. I think being an Angelino is a huge influence in, in my cooking. Is it just, I'm so familiar with these ingredients. Um, I'm familiar with the, with the farmers and the farmers markets and you know, all these different purveyors. So being able to, to make these connections, find these ingredients has not only you know, influenced my cooking, but has allowed my cooking to influence the city. Over my years of cooking, I've seen such a great evolution in food here in Los Angeles to become one of the, I think, one of the best culinary cities in the world. Now from happy taste buds to iconic taste makers. Martha Stewart's brand new restaurant has arrived in Las Vegas and our Jasmine Simpkins got the lucky assignment to dine one-on-one -on -one with the culinary queen. Martha, you ready? Yep. All right, let's do this. Well, thank you for letting LA Unscripted come to the Bedford. Why did you decide you wanted to open a restaurant here uh, in Vegas? I've always wanted a restaurant and uh, never got around to it. I was, and then when Caesars Entertainment came to me and said, we'd like you to have a restaurant in Vegas, I thought, God, this would be great. Because I've always liked coming to Las Vegas. Yeah, I feel like I stepped into your home. Like well, this you. is my Bedford home. Mm -hmm. I, I live on a farm in Bedford, New York, and this is a replica, although quite larger. Beautiful sconces, wonderful mirrors, fireplaces, yeah. a little marble here and there, and a kitchen that is just a delight with all the copper hanging, just like yes. my own kitchen, yes. only three times bigger. These are our recipes, our signature chocolate cake. You have a small piece in front of you, <laughs> which is served with buttermilk ice cream. And then over there in the little ramekin is a uh, delicious raspberry rhubarb crisp. This has creme fraiche ice cream alongside. And I grow all these things in my garden. I grow raspberries, currants. I love buttermilk, I love creme fraiche. That is very good. Isn't that good? Wait a minute. I've got to double in again. Oh my gosh. It's most popular, it sounds crazy, but it is utterly delicious, is the smashed potato. Then we have my mom's recipe for potato pierogi with brown butter. Very delicious. Well, Snoop is a good friend of LAU. What is his favorite dish? Uh, he had, the last time I had him here, uh, the roast chicken. Uh, he loved the macaroni and cheese because it's a four cheese macaroni, it's so good. We have lots of amazing drinks on that menu. This is our best selling wine. Oh my God. Martha's Shard. Uh, and we serve uh, our Cali, uh, the Cali Red is Snoop's delicious wine. And we have a two pack. Yeah. Get it? I get it. Okay. <laughs> Everything that you touch does amazing. Oh, thank you. So would you say this is one of many Bedfords to come? We don't know yet. We'll keep you posted. 
Okay, Jasmine's still waiting for that doggy bag of dessert. And we're serving up a few more chefs dominating the scene here. So don't go anywhere. LA Unscripted will be right back. Welcome back to LA Unscripted Super Chef Show. And if you're like me, you binge the critically acclaimed show, The Bear. All that kitchen tension you could have cut with a knife. But do you think I can handle the pressure on the line? Well, you're about to meet the man who trained actor Jeremy Allen White to be his best chef self, and he's about to meet me. Good luck to him. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Everything yes, chef. Hi, I'm Chef Dave. Dana, I dare you to go through the bear training at Pajoli. Anything along the way? Oh, shoot. So Why does mine look so bad? Pajoli is a great neighborhood bistro. Um, it's Parisian style cuisine conveyed through California produce. And we're here in Southern California, so why not make that the focal point? So far, so far. I would not hire you. <laughs> so far, I would not hire you. You're at like three months prior to Jeremy entering this kitchen at this point with your skill set, it seems. It's an absolutely wonderful show. Thank you. We found out that Jeremy was coming in three days before he was finishing up his stint at culinary school. So he and I texted a few times about what he needed and what time to be here, and that was it. He dove in. But we'll figure it out. Okay. So we're not going to make you cook. We're Good just going idea. to plate a dish. When did you know that Chris Storer was going to write The Bear? So we had a, another restaurant in Santa Monica, a little 18 seat tasting menu restaurant. A friend of mine was dining and he brought Chris Storer in as a guest who, you know, he's the guy who wrote and created The Bear. Hey, I'm working on the show. We'd love to talk to you about it. We'd love to see if an actor could train here with you for the show. 25 pounds? No, 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 I ordered 200. The idea is the chef leaves his family in Chicago to go uh, to New York to pursue his fine dining career. Something happens in the family. He has to move back to Chicago. And really just wanted to talk about how this, this actor becomes a chef and kind of brings that back to his family's restaurant. And so we thought, well, let's just bring him in. Let's figure out what Jeremy's capable of and what we're starting with and see how it goes. And so we set up a cutting board across from us and basically just gave Jeremy a bunch of things to cut that even if he screwed him up, it didn't matter. And I just hung out in restaurants for like four months. I just like, I cooked in restaurants. I, I just like stood in the corner and watched. I was in restaurants every day for four months and I, I, got a, I, I got to understand it. He immersed himself in the role. I have a lot of respect for how he handled the task of sort of, you know, becoming a chef, so to speak. He was great, very focused. Uh, we would have hired him as a cook by the end of it. You're gonna make all this look like all this. Okay. And then from there, we'll make the dish. You take the leaves off? Oh no, that's the good stuff. Oh, oops. <laughs> Here's the final product. Okay, show them yours. His is okay. His is okay. And then here is mine. Not bad, right? I mean, I think his still looks better, but not bad. So, all things considered, and keep in mind my passion my enthusiasm, my commitment to the final product. Could I be a chef in your kitchen? No, <laughs> not a chance. He was absolutely horrified by how messy I am in the kitchen. Okay, LA Unscripted will be right back with more Yes Chef moments. Welcome back to LA Unscripted and our Super Chef Special. Now, LA really has become quite the foodie town. You name the cuisine and we got it, including this Ethiopian restaurant with a James Beard nominee at the helm. So everybody sits around, nobody puts food in their mouth. You feed me, I feed you. I've never 
never been formally trained for anything. And I raised my son being a waitress. My son was my guinea pig. I didn't have anything for my son, but I had love and food. <laughs> Well, the Ethiopian salad is the most popular. It goes with any Ethiopian dish you make, period. And we have collard greens, cabbage and carrots, potatoes, carrot, green beans, yellow split peas. We have shiro, cold dishes also, azifa, the green lentils, tomato, olive oil, lemon juice, sunflower seed. So it's, it's endless. In Ethiopia, we have more. Here, you concentrate it. So this is injera? This is injera. That's okay. our Ethiopian bread. We put it, as you can see, on the base. to plate it on. Okay. And then you break the chicken if you eat that in the tofu. Okay. Just to start with the tofu. Kind of like this? Yes. And okay. you can mix it with the salad. I hope it's not spicy. I'm not afraid of spice. Okay, good girl. Mm. This is so good. The late Jonathan Gold spoke so highly of you and, and wrote about you. And what does that mean to you? Just it means everything. You are here. And so everyone's ordering the door wash. Pretty much. Oh my gosh. Well, then, and you know the what that means? You know what that means? That means I gotta taste a little. Okay. Yeah. That is delicious. And yeah. you said this takes. It takes days. me days with that. Yeah. I see why. He wrote the best dishes of 2004. He put my door on. He changed, he changed my whole life. And not just me, a lot of us, little places, little people like me, who would never, ever get anywhere. So I owe my whole career to Jonathan and to my God, for sure. most incredible customers you can imagine. I mean, when the pandemic happens, they were calling me, do you need money? I'm like, no, no, thank you. I'm okay for now. Just keep on coming. And they keep on getting the takeout. So now takeout hours are Thursday through Sunday, five to eight. Yes, so they can get it catered and private events are available like the whole week, seven days a week, they can book a private party. LA has fantastic food. So many places give you incredible dishes, incredible food. I think we're the star. I love that these hands mm -hmm. made all of this oh, and now you. we're eating it yes, together. Yes, Yeah. me too. I'm very happy you're here. Thank you. Thank really you for coming. Are you full yet? Because we've got more courses coming your way. You may know celebrity chef Eric Greenspan, the head honcho of grilled cheese. Well, now he shows us what he's cooking up. No flames needed. You know, it's funny. Like my entire career, I've always tried to kind of push the envelope. What's next? What is, what is nobody doing? My name is Eric Greenspan. Uh, I'm a chef by trade, but I am the uh, co-founder of New School American Cheese. How did you get into getting your own restaurants and getting on all of these shows and the, getting these awards? So I went to culinary school in France. I worked for Rocco de Spirito, I worked for Alain Ducasse. And my first executive chef job, I was 27 years old at Patina. Oh, So Patina. I was the last executive chef at the original Patina. And then opened my first restaurant, The Foundry on Melrose, in 2007. How did you get onto all of those shows that you've done? I, well, so there's a, I have the perfect combination of being dashingly handsome De and definitely. amazingly charming. 100%. Uh, and so that really, really helps. Mm -hmm. I'm not the chef in the room anymore, right? I'm, I, I make the product and I hand it to the chefs and it's, it's been an amazing experience. At the Foundry, we got really well known for our grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. And that grilled cheese sandwich got chosen on the best thing I ever ate. I did Next Iron Chef, I did Iron Chef. Yeah. You know, do Guy's Grocery Games. And yeah. Guy's Ranch Kitchen. Today, we're at one of our first restaurant partners. I sought out from the very beginning when we brought it to market called Wee Melrose. It's got mm. taste, it's got flavor. It's not just a textural thing. You know, we have burgers, cheesesteaks, you know, the cod sandwich. Uh, when Chef Eric uh, brought New School to the, to the shop for me to try, it was kind of a no-brainer to start using it. 
So the first thing that we started using it on was like our cod sandwich, our hot cod sandwich. So what made you decide to launch your own cheese brand? I constantly try to pivot. And so for me, it was about uh, what's gonna be the future. The problem with American cheese is for 100 years it's done this. Like chefs, like like for us, our guilty pleasures, American cheese. Right. Like nothing melts better on a burger. Nothing makes right. a better um, grilled cheese, right? Oh. Nothing makes a better macaroni and cheese. Three of these are very, very popular items here. The first one that we have here is our hot cod sandwich. I've never had a fish sandwich with two fillets on it like that before. Like yeah. that's just insane. Okay, yeah. hold on. Oh my god! <laughs> it leaves it, anyway! It, it. Oh my god, that's so good! That's the reaction we want. Oh Another super popular item of ours, our house double. Yeah. And then this is the cheesesteak, the ribeye cheesesteak. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is that the best cheesesteak in Los Angeles? I don't know if I've ever had one like this. No. It is so rich and delicious. I am absolutely melting inside with happiness over all of this cheese and all of this delicious food. Thank you so much, Chef Armin. Thank You're you welcome. so much, Chef Thank Eric. You, my pleasure. Thank oh you. my God, this was delicious. And if you want to buy it at home, you can go to uh, McCall's in Los Feliz or Santa Monica for service on Washington Boulevard. They all sell pre-sliced New School American now. I'll leave to that. Yeah. Thanks for ordering up with LA Unscripted. And remember to keep sending us all your local faves because you never know where we'll end up next. Good night. Does anyone have a cookie? Mwah. <laughs>